Hello, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. I'm standing outside on a drizzly uh, January afternoon, and I'm here to answer one question. Can you make money on your small acreage farm or home, your small homestead? And the short answer is yes. I currently am uh, making well over $1,000 a month uh, on different projects if you average it out throughout the year. Obviously, there's times a year I make more, times a year that I make less, but uh, is that enough to live off of? No. Um, most people you'll find that have the homestead lifestyle, uh, they provide, produce a lot of their own food, whether it's the meat uh, from goats, pigs, cows, or whatever, and produce, uh, their vegetable garden, but uh, they don't provide enough to live off of. Most people have to have an income besides that. I myself am a school teacher, so which is really beneficial for me. I get a little bit of time in the winter to work on some things. I get a spring break, which is key to getting some planting in or uh, things prepared. And then I have a few months off in the summer, so <laughs> I can get a, a, a lot of time into my projects. Uh, so I'm going to give you some examples of different things that you can do and you probably won't be able to do or and give you an idea of what's reasonable on how much you can make. So most of us, if we have some acreage, have the ability to make some money, but what's our expectation? How much are you expecting to make? And then the other thing I want to emphasize is uh, do something that fits your passion. You know, if you love uh, the garden, uh, you know, produce produce and find a market there. If you love chickens and goats, uh, which I make money on also, then do it there. If you love cutting firewood, which is one of my sources of income, do that, uh, you know, work on that there. But uh, if you try to stick a square peg into a round hole, it doesn't work very well. You need to find something. I, I will, well, you can make money without enjoying it, but I would recommend most of us want to do this for lifestyle and because we like being out on the property. So find projects that you like that has uh, a value, a monetary value to it, to somebody else, and then you can make money off of it. So let's uh, go talk about a few things that you can and can't do. Okay, right now I'm standing outside just out by my goat chicken barn. You can see some of the chickens wandering by. My buck is up there on his bunk bed shelf he likes to sleep on. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about chickens. Uh, I do have another video if you want to watch it. I posted and yes, you can make money off of chickens. Uh, you can find that on my channel. But um, how much money you can make varies a lot. You know, when we talk about selling eggs, everybody thinks I'm gonna have chickens, I'm gonna sell a lot of eggs. Um, if you're buying feed, all the time and your chickens are stuck inside the barn and are stuck inside a small run where there's not much natural feed, you're going to have to feed them a lot and the amount of profit you're going to be able to have is going to be significantly reduced because you're putting so much money into feed. So can you provide table scraps or forage or whatever else it is that you want to feed your chickens besides um, Besides the, the feed that you're buying at the store, then you can make more money. I, I wanted you to see my chickens wandering around here. My chickens are free to roam over several acres. And so uh, during the summer, they're out and they're finding bugs and grass seed and everything else. And so the amount of feed that I have to give them uh, might be significantly less than someone that has it in a small chicken run. And so uh, the profit margin is a little bit there. But then you have to have yourself a market. I've never tried to sell a ton of chicken eggs. I just wanted to sell a few extras. I have four uh, four young men that live with me, or four sons, and they eat a lot of eggs. And so when we have a lot of eggs, um, sometimes I'll have a dozen or two or four or five to sell off uh, during the week. And because, as I mentioned earlier, I, I'm a teacher and I go to work, usually if you only have a few dozen eggs to sell off each week or whatnot, you might have an individual or people at work that want to buy that. That's great. But if you try to produce multiple, many, many dozens of eggs every week or whatnot, then you've got to find a way to market it, and that becomes a little bit harder. But... Uh, Again, if you have a way of feeding the chickens, other than just putting them in a small pen and, and giving them feed, you're a lot more uh, profitable if, if they could free range and, and feed themselves throughout most, of the time, uh, throughout most of the day. I will say though that I've had a lot of success with chickens and it went great for years and then the coyotes found a way in and then it killed you. So the benefits of free ranging are awesome. I didn't have to feed them as much, but when they became coyote feed, uh, that was really uh, a difficult situation, so you have to be careful of that. Uh, the other thing that, about, uh, that you can do to, uh, for chickens is, and I made, so showed it in that video, is uh, start raising a bunch of 
poults, the young chicks, and raise them up to a point of production. That's when they're going to start laying eggs. And then you can sell them for significantly more money when they're at point of production. And then, uh, so they're the most valuable they've ever got. They, you've raised them past the weak, young age. You know that they're a good, strong chicken. And then they're now producing. You don't have to feed them for those six months before they start laying eggs. And so uh, you could sell those at a much higher rate than you can sell most other chickens. Um, uh, when I tried to sell mine off, I sold them all within a couple of weeks. Um, I do think that uh, you have to be careful not to saturate your market because there's only so many people that are going to want to pay $25, $30, $35 for a, a hen that just started laying. Uh, most of the time people wanted pairs because uh, they just wanted a couple or they wanted to replace some that uh, they lost to a predator or a dog or something else or just old age or they wanted to cycle it out. So by being able to sell point of production chickens, uh, it's pretty profitable, but uh, there's only so many you're gonna sell each year at a given amount of time. So uh, you, don't, you don't wanna have an expectation of selling too many right there. If you wanna hatch chicks, uh, selling off chicks even younger can be very profitable too. I have chickens running around my farm now after the coyotes hit me pretty hard. I have a friend that has a couple roosters and multiple hens and so he had fertilized eggs bought an incubator and he's been hatching them out uh i think 50 at a time something like that and then selling them off and he, he's been doing pretty good uh making some money just hatching out chicks and then selling them off the other animals that you can make money off obviously there's many different types of animals that if you can raise them for beef or meat or of any sort uh or even just uh pets that could be beneficial. I've had as many as 22 goats at one time on this property. No more than that at any given time. I'm down a little bit smaller right now, partly due to the coyote problem and partly due I sold a whole bunch off. So I've made a good amount of money selling off goats. Uh, the reason we originally wanted to get goats is this whole hillside that uh, is behind me back here. This whole hillside was blackberries and we couldn't uh, keep them down. That rooster is not going to help with this uh, video. But anyway, so blackberries, blackberries, and blackberries everywhere. So my first two goats were just here to uh, get rid of blackberries. Then I fell in love with goats. I really enjoyed having them. And then my neighbors wanted me to clear their property as well. So I got more and more goats. And then you get a buck and a few does. You get more. Then eventually you have to start selling them off. And if you sell them in the spring, I found, especially goats, because that's what people want them for is to clear their property. Uh, you can get a pretty good price for goats. And uh, if you get some good healthy goats and take care of them, they take care of themselves. They, they graze the property. Uh, usually they birth their own kids and raise their own young without having to help them too much. And then, uh, then they raise them up. And then when you get too many or you've you got to change your bloodlines, you, you sell off some goats and you can do a pretty good job making money on goats. Uh, you know, obviously if you have land, you can raise beef, sheep, Whatnot. We are intending, part of the reason our goat herd is down was we tried to sell a lot of goats off and we're going to expand into sheep. Um, I, we've, our family personally likes to eat lamb uh, more than uh, goat meat. So anyway, so we're going to go for some, getting some lamb. But again, we had some predator problems. So we're waiting till we can find some good livestock guardian dogs before we start adding sheep because uh, we don't want the predators to take, take everything away from us. All right, I mentioned earlier, if you want to try to make money off of your homestead uh, small acreage farm, try to find something you enjoy doing. And this firewood stand is uh, something that is that for me. Uh, it was a little uh, fun, rustic outdoor project, put a nice sign on it, and I've been putting firewood bundles in here, and I've been doing very well. Uh, in the summers, early summer camping season, I'm selling over $100 a week in bundles. Uh, the lowest part of the year is when the burn ban comes on late summer. People are still camping, but there's a burn ban because it dries out. And then when hunting season and snowmobile season comes along, uh, I've been doing really well. So I think throughout the year, I'm averaging selling about $100 a week in bundles. Uh, this road is really typically pretty busy, but it's uh, uh, just a weekend. And so there's not traffic going up and down uh, right now. And the snowmobilers are already up the hill, but there's a lot of campers, uh, hunters, snowmobilers, uh, just explorers going up and they need firewood and they stop here. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, 
I'm a school teacher and I love my students, but ha working with 180 of other people's kids throughout the day, you come home and just cutting and splitting some firewood, making some bundles is relaxing and therapeutic. So uh, not only not only am I able to make some money off of this, but uh, you know I, I enjoy the process. It does not work for me uh, if I'm not having to catch up and do too many bundles. Uh, this firewood stand I have also used to sell eggs. Here's an old sign. Obviously, I haven't sold eggs for a while. I haven't. You can see that my sign's kind of dirty, but I've, I'll put eggs in there, sell them out of there. I've sold uh, tomato starts, plant starts, uh, sunflowers. I've sold all kinds of produce. So uh, these are things like I don't have enough produce that I'm like a true market so I don't have a way to sell it but I do have it right here so anything that I have extra off my property berries tomatoes whatever else I could bring them down here put a sign up and then they, they get sold uh, things so and I, I'm not sitting here saying you know uh, spending time and hours doing it uh, if you followed my uh, channel you know that I had that fire uh, the thief that uh, robbed my firewood stand multiple times and he's been arrested. Actually, his court date was last week. Uh, he's not going to court just for my firewood stand, but he was vandalizing it with a stolen truck and other stuff. But uh, anyway, um, so you do run the risk of having something like this that's not monitored to having issues. But uh, once that individual that uh, was causing all the problems was arrested, I found that almost everything is getting paid for at an air ice fair price. I even did a self-serve garage sale. I had a bunch of stuff that my wife wanted to take to Goodwill, and I said, well, how about we try to sell this garage sale? And we're like, I don't want to sit out and wait all day. I said, neither do I. I put everything out on a table out here, and I put a sign up that says, the price that you think it is is right. Uh, whatever you think, put it, that money in the box. And uh, we stuff that we were going to give away to Goodwill, we had $80 in our box, and a large part of it gone. And then the rest of it we did take to Goodwill. All right, behind me you see here another way that I'm making money off of my property. On the lower part of my property, we have power, water, and septic here. So we hooked up an RV pad, and uh, we have a family renting this uh, for $650 a month. And so that's a nice little piece of income. Over here on the back side, you can see a cabin off in the distance. That is a public restroom, sink, and heated shower that uh, people campers can use and, and so we've opened up our property just towards the end of last summer we got done and we opened up our property to hipcamp.com it's kind of an Airbnb for campsites if you have a property that people would like to come out and just a spot to put a tent you could rent out tents you might have a cabin teepees whatever it is that you want to rent out um, obviously the more you offer the more you can charge but typically you know a camp uh, just a tent site with nothing much else there uh, you get about 50 bucks a night, something like that. So uh, anyway, there's uh, different things to attract the families out here, but uh, those are different ways to make income. I, I, the nice thing about hip camp, hip camp, you can close dates, open dates, whatever you want. We started using it when the renters moved in. We decided to shut down hip camp until a little bit later, but we'll probably open up again next summer and we'll still have a renter here and campsites out off in the distance uh, near the pond and so, uh, just another way to make a little bit of money. You have to ask yourself, do you want people on your property? Is it safe? That type of thing. But uh, so far, both hip camp and the renting of our RV pad has been a, a very positive experience and a good source of income. So what else can you do? So when, you, when I mentioned earlier that I'm making well over $1,000 uh, average monthly income, uh, I was talking about the RV pad, the firewood stand, uh, had doing some egg sales and some produce sales. But then my other thing is Christmas trees. I have a Christmas tree farm. Uh, uh, it's actually only about six acres right now. But you can, uh, I don't necessarily recommend doing Christmas trees because you're going to be losing money for at least eight years because it takes a long time to get to where you're ready to sell it. But once you're doing that, you know, I expect to be selling five to 600 trees a year off of my Christmas tree farm. I've been doing that for 20 years. So on a good year, I, I make a significant amount of money on Christmas trees that is not my full-time business. So that, that that is a good income. Other people that use seasonal things like pumpkins, or uh, um, that's another one, holiday things. If you can grow pumpkins, the nice thing is you can plant one year and have them that very same year. Uh, you could do other things like on my Christmas tree farm, I have a petting zoo. 
uh, which is a draw for the Christmas tree farm. But if you have animals, you could actually just do a petting zoo on weekends and uh, if, get some people out to see your animals if they're really friendly, people would pay to do that. Uh, another thing, if you have a nice piece of property, and you don't have to do it all often, but uh, at our Christmas tree farm, uh, actually Barry, my business partner, owns that land, but they built a barn for their daughter's wedding and, and created a nice spot for wedding venues, and they had lots and lots of requests to do weddings. Um, they did many of them, and it, it financially very did very well, but uh, uh, they, they decided to... Sometimes people are a little uptight during weddings and, you know, panic to hate to say it, but especially the women, you know, oh no, the bride started 10 seconds too soon or this or that. And, uh, you know, everything just has to be perfect. And so uh, doing weddings can be really stressful. It can be very lucrative, but it can be very stressful depending on how involved you want to be. Uh, I know that besides weddings, they've really enjoyed different things like the rehearsal dinners or different parties or celebrations, birthday parties and whatnot. Um, so it's a chance for people to come in and out. It doesn't take nearly as much setup. Things don't have to be quite as perfect as a wedding, but people can really enjoy the property. They come in and then they go out and you can make a, a decent amount of money if you have uh, a venue that people would enjoy just spending the afternoon and a day and, and celebrating together and having space for just their family. One of the things that has made a significant difference lately in the ability of people to have a small homestead, raise their own food, and make a little bit of money at home is the fact that there's now quality internet accessible to most of us. Uh, we were able to get Starlink earlier this year and that's been a game changer for us. Uh, we felt like we were so isolated. We, there's different forms of internet and they were just all terrible. And uh, I almost started crying when we got Starlink. It was so nice. And so uh, I will admit that Starlink is slowing down significantly since we got it because so many people are on, but it's still way better than anything else that we had before. I can upload video, download video, and I know that the people that uh, are renting an RV, they run a business, uh, online business, uh, with using Starlink out here. And uh, I know a lot of pe other people use tutoring or do accounting for other people. So there's so many different jobs or different things that you could do to make money online from home. And uh, now that uh, Starlink and other technologies are available, uh, people can spend time on their own property, you know, work part-time at that, work part-time on their property, and develop things. So there's ways to look at doing that. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, just recently my YouTube channel became monetized uh, last year. Over this last year, I probably averaged making $300 a month uh, on my YouTube channel, which indirectly is another way that I'm making money off of my homestead or my small acreage farm. Okay, so to reiterate, I would say you can make money off your small acreage homestead. Uh, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. Be reasonable and there are expectations of how much you can make based on the amount of property. And find something that you're good at and you really enjoy doing and working on. Different projects like uh, whether it's firewood or growing vegetables or raising chickens or sheep or whatever it is. Find something that you enjoy and you're going to be a lot happier than if you're just chasing the money, chasing the money. But there are ways to make out there. People like organic, fresh, uh, off the farm produce and animals. So go ahead and go for it. And thanks for joining me on the Flanagan Homestead, where Christmas trees are my business. Teaching and cleaning horticulture is my job, and outdoor projects are my passion. Hope to see you again soon. Be blessed, everyone.